Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about property rights, and I will talk about also how it's related to taxation. A lot of the times I hear, especially libertarians, especially libertarians in the United States, talk about property rights as like a foundational right. Like, they build their whole system of legal rights, and even their like moral system, off the idea of property ownership and respecting people's property rights. Libertarians and people who adhere to these sorts of philosophies tend to have a problem with people taking things by force. So there's this idea that if I own property, it's not okay for someone else to come and take that property from me. And that the main role of the government is to enforce these legal rights, and to keep people from taking property from others by force. And I think this sounds like a generally good idea. But I'm not convinced that property rights are a useful concept if you view them as like a fundamental right. And there's a really compelling reason why, and that's that a large portion of the wealth that exists in the world can be traced back to property that was taken from other people by force. So an example would be here in the United States. All the land that we live on used to belong to Native Americans. I mean, belong is a little bit of a problematic word because Western civilization kind of imposed their idea of property rights on Native Americans. Uh, Native American civilizations were pretty diverse, and they certainly didn't all have the same idea of property rights that we have nowadays, or even that we had at the time of Europeans coming to the New World. So, because the land was taken from these Native Americans by force, in many cases, and then it's been passed on through generations, it's rooted in this coercion that violates libertarian principles. So it's kind of not internally consistent to view that as a foundational thing. Unless you're going to really critically examine the distribution of property nowadays, and I don't hear libertarians doing that at all. Another example that really throws a wrench in the whole idea of property rights being fundamental in a libertarian value system is slavery. A lot of the wealth that was built up in the United States, and particularly in the Deep South, was based around slavery. And much of this wealth has been passed through generations. You have families in the South that are wealthy now because in previous generations they built this wealth using slave labor. And slavery is something that virtually everyone in our modern society agrees is wrong. And libertarians certainly agree that it's wrong. So, again, this idea of property ownership being fundamental is problematic. I also see this in the Israel-Palestine conflict. There, you don't even have to go as far back in time to find land that was taken by force from other people who lived there. And in some cases, if you go back farther and farther, you have land that was taken back again and again by different parties by force. That's true in a lot of parts of the world. So I think that this idea of property rights being foundational or fundamental, it's just not a useful concept. It leads to like internal inconsistency. So I think of property ownership as something that it's kind of arbitrary, and I think it's good to enforce it to a degree, but to view it as something that has limitations. One way that I'd like to see property rights be limited is through how we design the tax system. And I think it's particularly relevant to the estate tax. The estate tax is a tax on inherited wealth. So when someone dies and they pass their property to their children or to other people in their will, if their estate has a value beyond a certain point, the government takes a certain portion of that. And I think that the estate tax is actually a really beneficial type of tax, because it puts a cap or limit on the amount of wealth that can be passed through generations. So it kind of gives us the opportunity to erase some of that harm, create like a clean slate. Like if we allow wealth to be passed without limit through generations, 
those ills of slavery and of Native Americans being evicted from their land, those can be passed through the generations too. So we have this distribution of property that reflects these coercive things that don't reflect our modern values. On the other hand, if we have a higher estate tax, then that kind of frees up some of that wealth. I really like the idea of raising the estate tax. Having a relatively high estate tax, especially on estates that have a very high net worth, and using that income to lower other taxes. So for example, the income tax or the federal payroll tax. These are taxes on work. Like when people work, they earn income, and they pay the payroll tax and the income tax. And I think that it damages the economy, and it is kind of contradictory to the values that we supposedly espouse here in the United States to have these taxes on work. You know, supposedly in America, we're supposed to value hard work and like building yourself up. So why do we tax work when we are not taxing inherited wealth as much as we could be? So for this reason, I support in general limits on property rights, and one of these limits is the estate tax. I really support the idea of a, an estate tax. So I'd love to hear from you if you have any comments, if there's something I've said that you disagree with, or something that you agree with, or something that you want to add, please share. And I love it when people share my videos and subscribe. Thank you.